Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over how to do multiple regression on R, including various other steps that will be useful for it. So I opened up R Studio and I'm going to go to file and new file and R script. I'm beginning with a blank R script. And as soon as I open it, I'm going to go to back to file and then save as and save as as a multi reg uh, script, multi reg script, save and multi reg script dot R. So this is the file that we're going to write the R code in. And it's good to do it this way because you can save this file and you can save all the code you type. And I already have it on the side here and I'm going to be pasting part by part so you get uh, the idea of what's going on. So as usual, I like to put some introduction about what the file is so you write it out. And uh, also let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. I don't want to zoom in too much because there's a lot of uh, windows here that we want to keep an eye on. So. As usual, we want to get working directly. You don't have to highlight everything. If you just put the cursor here on this line, it should just run this line and you get your current directory. And as usual, we're going to bring in the data that we want to use. And I'm going to use the COPD, or which is the pulmonary disease data set that we used before. And I'm going to load it into the COPD variable and I run that. And it should appear there. And we should already kind of have also this head open parenthesis COPD, which will print out some of the beginning of the data. Maybe we can kind of open this a little bit more. I'll notice that in the environment here, you can see that the variable COPD was has 101 observations, 101 rows, and 24 variables. And if you double click on it, it should open up table format here as well, which is, uh, it can be very useful. So let's go back to the script, make this a little bit smaller. Here the console, we see the results. And one thing here that we may have talked about before is checking the data type. So you can use the class um, class function and that gives you the data type in the console on the bottom here. Because sometimes we're going to need to change the data type in the multiple regression. There is a summary function for the summary stats gives us a little review of this uh, data. and. You can see here the age and the summary stats give you minimal, maximum, median, mean, and other very and other results, other statistics. If you want to change from one, so if we look at gender, for example, gender is written as zero or one, so the computer may first interpret that as integer zero or one, but it's actually a binary and it's actually a categorical variable, and it's a and in are they call that a factor? So we can change that to factor via this code here. S dot factor, S dot factor, and then the actual variable we're changing. And then notice that here, when I do that, when I make it, I lo I'm loading it back into the uh, data frame that we're using, the COPD data frame. And then if we do class again, it should now be shown as uh, factor. Let me see that here. And I'm going to put some comments here for you. You can uh, check, you can go back to integer or numeric, VIS numeric or as integer and there's some other ones as well. Now I'm going to show you here a, another function, a describe function that check can check for date missing values or outliers. It's kind of like a summary function, but it has some additional uh, benefits. And to do that, I'm going to need to install and load this library, HMISC. And there might be some dependent packages there, but I think they will install them by themselves. And I'm not sure if I already did it before, but currently load. Okay, so I already installed them, so I don't need to, but you can run these two commands here. And then we're going to use this describe function of this HMISC uh, library. And of course, you can see more details about this library and this package on uh, on the internet on their R pages. But you're only going to be able to dis use this describe function if you uh, install and load this package. And you can see here, it goes 
variable by variable, and it gives us some of the similar summary statistics, the mean, percentiles, and also missing values, which is nice, which the summary doesn't do. Lowest, highest, and so on. Now, I wanted to talk to you about uh, pairwise correlation and correlation because that's part of what we're doing in multiple regressions to see the association uh, between variables, how one variable changes, the other changes as well. And to create a pairwise correlation, or to create, which is a set of correlation among various variables of the data set, we're going to need to use continuous variables because correlation is about continuous variables. So we can use integer uh, for this correlation, which is not technically not continuous, but at least it's numeric. Uh, but there are the statistical uh, considerations that we need to make there. But generally, people do use uh, integer variables in correlation matrices. So first, what I'm going to do is create a vector with the continuous variables on the data set. So I'm just going to focus on a few. So these are age, which is integer, and it's not continuous. Uh, at least how we are, it is in the data. Pack history, uh, this is a measure of long function. Uh, these are two different measures of long function, the FEV, uh, and the FEV1, FEV1 pred, and FVC. And then we also have additional measures here, which I'm going to give you an explanation about these and the CAT has to do with the test of COPD itself, the COPD assessment test. That's kind of like the type of COPD. Um, the HAD, which it has to do with anxiety and depression level, and then the SGRQ, which is quality of life. So these are continuous in the data set. They're represented by continuous numbers, so we can use them here. But first, I'm just creating a vector. So this is a kind of combination of these variables into one a set, and this is how we do it in R. And I'm going to run that. I don't think I ran it yet. And then after I run that, I can actually uh, create the uh, correlation matrix and view the output. So just I'm going to select these because I want to run these two. And then, so what we get here is those, the standard result is the Pearson correlation. So what you can see here is that you see how all the variables we listed are both on the initial column here as well as on the other columns here. So age and age, well, it's correlated 100%, so that's why it's one. Now, how to read this is, the correlation between pack history and age is 0 0.0015, negative 0 0.0015. So as one goes up, the other goes down, but it's not very correlated at all. It's zero, 0, Remember, we're looking for numbers between 0 and 1, but 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is weak, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 is getting somewhere, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is very correlated. It's getting to be very correlated, and 0 0.7 above is considered very correlated both negative or positive direction. So point 0.1, uh, not really. Point 0.14, this, these are not very strongly correlated, but point 0.22, okay, it's getting somewhere. Um, but we also have to, you know, look into, for example, things like um, a p-value, which ev every one of these measures has. Let me do another thing here, too, which has to do with uh, rounding the numbers. So it looks better. We don't need all those long numbers for the correlation. So here it's much better to interpret. And you can see, look for some higher numbers. So 82, well, 82 is kind of between. So FVC, which is a long function, and FEV1. So they're both long function tests. So we would expect them to be very highly correlated. And you can see that along this axis here, everything is one because it's the same variable with the same variable. And it kind of gets repeated here too. Sometimes they don't show all above, it's, uh, but it gets repeated. So tell you we have FEV1 correlation with age, and then we have also age correlation with FEV1 here. And as you can see, they're the same number. So there's repeated data here. 
So that's it for the correlation matrix uh, actual numbers. But what about visualizing them? There's actually ways to visualize this. So I'm go going to use another package. I already installed these packages. So I'm gonna, not going to install them again, but you can run this. This is from performance analytics package. And we're going to use this chart correlation uh, function. Not chart correlations, chart correlation. And this, if we run this here, it should create a chart. It's very small on our screen. We'll open up the plot area. And you can see it's kind of this, has a lot going on here. Uh, you also select it for the histogram to go through, but you can see the scatter plot. And you can see the uh, histogram of the specific variable. Now, in a previous instance, it also gave me the Pearson correlation coefficients up here, because remember how these areas repeat? So if you have, um, uh, you can put at, at all the information here, for example, this would be age and pack history information. This is about age and pack history right here. This is, you can see the scatter plot, so it doesn't seem very correlated. Uh, age and pack history, age and FEV1. Maybe it's kind of hard to read, but this is the correlation between age and FEV1, the scatter plot between age and FEV1, scatter plot between age and FEV1 pred, scatter plot between right here, age and FVC, scatter plot between age and CAT, scatter plot between age and HAD, anxiety and disorder, and scatter plot between age and quality of life. And then here is about pack history and quality of life. And here's about FEV1 and quality of life and so on. So this is how to read this graph. Now, I don't know what happened with the correlation coefficients. They're not listed here, but they're listed right here. So you can interpret the correlation coefficients as well. And this helps us for uh, deciding which variables are correlation are correlated and we may want to include them in the regression model. So I'm going to stop here and we'll continue on after this.